Momentum space. Here we have an interesting problem in which we wish to show the expectation value of x given here, and we are not writing it in our normal psi star x psi dx, but instead we're writing it as phi star and the operator written in the momentum space times phi, which is the momentum space function, with respect to dp, the uh, differential momentum. Um, here we say that in momentum space then the position operator is as such, and more generally we see that if we want the expectation value of some observable, that is a function of the dynamic variables uh, x and p, of course time can tag along though not really um, that prevalent, then we could see that we could split this expectation into the operator for x, momentum, and uh, momentum as a function of the position and t with respect to position and position space or similarly but different with the momentum wave function instead of the positional wave function with the operator and instead of having momentum be the differential we have the partial of p and that is the position operator but in momentum space okay so in principle you can do all the calculations in momentum space just as well though not always as easily as in position space this is a you know kind of new breed of problem solving unless you've taken like differential equations and you've seen tactics like laplace transforms uh fourier transforms we've seen this before uh you know big thing that comes to mind is convolution in the time domain and you know or convolution in the uh, function domain and uh, multiplication in the transform domain or time domain versus frequency domain all that comes from the Fourier style analysis so this is all a matter of perspective and what is most convenient for what we have there is no right way so to speak but you know whatever is more convenient is generally what is liked the most so let's go ahead and see how to show this relation. If we start with our general definition of the uh, position wave function uh, or with the expectation with respect to the position wave function, you see here blue and green because of the conjugate there. X is just nice and neat here. We like that, no big deal. Uh, but we realize that, you know, back in this chapter, uh, we saw how we could write the uh, wave function as a Fourier transform and inverse Fourier transform uh, respectively of the uh, position wave function and going back and forth because of their continuous uh, spectra of eigenstates and eigenvalues. Um, but nonetheless, we see that we had definitions for the spatial wave function with respect to the momentum wave function, and that's what we see here plugged in in the blue and green brackets. Of course, we have the uh, conjugate here, so we have a negative sign on the exponential. Here we don't, so that stays positive. And these are the momentum wave function and the momentum wave function. Um, you know, we use prime on the variables here because, you know, by being implicitly defined, we don't know that that P is the same as this P. So P prime lets us know that that had to be conjugated to some respect. It's a generalized case, but we'll see that it doesn't matter soon enough. Um, you know, so apply this operator to the right. We see that we have X tagged in a green bracket. Now our goal is to simplify this down into something uh, a little more manageable. All right, so we need to notice that with the hint given by the author in this particular question, we can observe that the derivative with respect to P up here, let me get the laser, here D by DP of the green exponential leads to a factor of X coming out front. And of course, I H bar tag along everywhere. Uh, but what we can see here is that because we had an X times a green exponential in the last uh, slide, um, what we note is that if we can find a relationship for this, we can substitute it in. And, you know, if we have a differential relation, we could use integration by parts. And so solving for X in the green exponential, we get this relation. 
Notice here how X comes out to this thing here. How freaking funny is that? That we have a similar setup for the uh, position uh, with res or the momentum with respect to the position operator. This is the kind of duality in what they call the duals or subspace. There's a lot of fancy other words for the linear algebra side of things, but it's pretty cool to see this come to uh, fruition. Let's go ahead and see what this has done, uh, you know, by substituting it in. Note, we will need integration by parts. So if you forget, here we have uh, u dv is equal to uv minus v to u. Clearly, u, the obvious candidate for that would be the... Um, psi function here um, and then for v or dv would be the differential so it all makes sense and in the process of you know uh, applying the integration by parts as you see the derivative transfers so we're good there no big deal also as we saw i believe in the last question that we talked over the uh, adjoint of a derivative um, gets a negative sign because of integration by parts so this negative sign gets put into the bracket here no big deal just be aware that all these other concepts are coming into play now and so we see that these repeated themes keep happening uh, again being in hilbert space we know that these wave functions have to die out at plus or minus infinity because we need to be finite so this boundary term goes bye bye we like that pretty pretty clever little scope of thought there so what we need to do is recombine this back into the original statement um and so you know let's go ahead and tidy this up here uh we only have the blue bracket uh note that we had two factors of two pi h bar on with the square root so they come out and simplify nicely and let's go uh see what the green bracket simplifies to nice uh, so here, we just tidy up nice. This is the carryover from plugging in the integration by parts. No big deal. You see I purposely put the negative sign in the bracket. Um, now what we want to do is that after substituting in, we want to combine all the integrals. And we want to start with the x integral first. Notice that Fubini's theorem allows us to do this because the bounds on any of the integrations don't rely on the other variables. Uh, just be aware whenever you're changing orders that sometimes you're going to have to be cautious in changing variable orders. Uh, you know, go back to calculus three or multivariable for more detail. Uh, but here, you know, a little bit of insight gives us a fair play. Whenever we're dealing with exponentials, you know, which is what we have in the blue and green over infinite bounds, you know we kind of have a few tricks up our sleeves and in this one we have the Dirac Delta note that we showcased that this was the case when we found a Fourier transform of the Dirac Delta and then the inverse transform and this was the infinite integral of the form e to the i k x dk um, very unique and very useful here so let's go ahead and see what happens and if we notice that when we tidy up here in line three, we get a single exponential. P is positive, so it's P minus the blue prime. Um, but we have everything set up in the form that we need for the delta. So let's see how this thing matches up. You see here that if we're looking to match the form of what we have in the integral here, we need to multiply the two pi over, which is what we have here, two pi. And then here, again, remember that delta is a function of x in this integral definition. But x here is p minus p prime over h bar. This is the x variable that we need a form match with. Because in the black integral, we have x integrating out with dx. So the function is going to be a function of p and p prime. So be very careful in form matching these things because it becomes very annoying. In the integral formulation here, as stated in yellow, we have Q or K goes to the X variable here. So beware, beware, beware. That's what we're doing. All right. So here then in line three or line uh, four, we, you know, plug in the equivalency here. Uh, but you notice here that we have a factor of H bar outside, although our X here was P minus P prime over H bar. Uh, you might have recalled that this h bar outside is 
you know makes sense when you, we remind ourselves of the scaling property which tells us that if we have a constant c times the uh argument that we go to one over that magnitude of the constant times the original function which is just the argument and we don't need to worry anymore here that c is uh one over h bar as we see here this is a fraction so that means we're multiplying by one over h bar and the fraction in the denominator is just the same as multiplying by the reciprocal which in this case would just be h bar and you see we get a perfect amount just to cancel the coefficient out front so i uh, you know you know this theory is so nice and easy uh, with respect to how they normalize these things that this is what we expect though not always obvious okay so here then we have just a you know double integral with a delta term uh, notice though that the deltas make our lives kind of easy if we realize that of course we can apply another delta property known as the sifting property okay so here then we need to realize that we're sifting the integral out uh, here though we see that we need to also apply the scaling property again if we realize that we are sifting to point p which is in green and that is a negative we need to factor out a negative of the argument but again due to the fact that we divide by a negative one over or a one over magnitude c and that the c would be just negative one it doesn't matter shift so sift it out and uh we realize that we're just left with the green integral of psi or phi star at p and then we see here that we just bring the uh, uh derivative and bracket down and we see that we have our x operator operating on the wave function in momentum space and we conclude quite nicely that this is what we were trying to prove or rather trying to highlight and showcase with the position variable or the expectation of position in momentum space um again Fourier transforms keep coming through the deltas keep coming through all these tools in our toolbox are just adding up and we're starting to see how we can manipulate these equations and variables to be very uh user friendly so to speak depending on what context we have and going back and forth to different spaces or different domains is definitely going to be nice when we get to the other hefty topics. So definitely practice with these concepts because more is coming. So thank you for watching. And until next time, stay curious and happy learning.